Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is faith-filled Gentiles. Jesus loves Gentiles. After healing a Roman centurion's servant, Jesus said his faith was greater than the faith of any person he had met amongst the Jews. Frequently, people say to me that Jesus came for Israel only. Those who make this claim might not be aware of how much time Jesus spent teaching and healing in predominantly Gentile regions in the Middle East. As I study the New Testament, I think it is highly likely that Jesus healed more Gentiles than Jews. In this week's episode of The Life Jesus Modeled, we will follow the longest journey that Jesus made into areas mostly inhabited by Gentiles. From Galilee, Jesus headed north to the ancient city of Tyre in modern-day Lebanon. Mark tells us, And from Galilee he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon, Mark chapter 7 and verse 24. The streets Jesus walked on can still be walked on today. When Jesus arrived in Tyre, we read that Jesus entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden, Mark chapter 7 and verse 24. That statement might be confusing to some people, Jesus was not hiding to get away from people. He was proving to his disciples that his message cannot be hidden even amongst the Gentiles. He was demonstrating what he had taught his disciples, that a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. The news about Jesus had already reached the people of Tyre, and he was recognized as he entered the city. It did not take long for people to find out where Jesus was staying. Sometimes Jesus hides himself so that he can be found by people desperately searching for help from God. The prophet Jeremiah said, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. Soon, a desperate mother of a demonized daughter found out where Jesus was staying. Mark chapter 7 says, Immediately, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Notice that she heard of Jesus. She found where she was staying, where he was staying, and fell at his feet and worshipped him. Mark chapter 7 and verse 36 says, Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. Mark identifies her as Gentile, Syrophoenician. She definitely was not Jewish. Most likely, the disciples would not have wanted her to ask Jesus for help, but she managed to get past them and to be in the presence of Jesus. What happened next shocked the disciples even more. Jesus spoke kindly to her. What Jesus said to her has been misunderstood by many. When Jesus says unusual things to people, it is because he wants to reveal the heart of the person he is talking to and the hearts of the people who are listening to him. A wise man taught me that what offends a person's mind usually reveals the person's heart. When Jesus said something hard, especially to religious leaders, he does it to reveal the hardness in their hearts. Jesus already knew the heart of this mother, 
and he wanted to reveal her heart to his disciples. Listen carefully to what he said. Let the children be fed first. It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Mark chapter 7 and verse 27. The disciples were shocked and caught by surprise at the words Jesus chose for dog. Instead of the usual word Jews used to describe Gentiles as dirty, vicious, wild dogs, Jesus used the word for small puppies. Now, not everyone likes dogs, but most people think that small puppies at least are cute. By using this word, Jesus sent a clear signal to the woman that he would answer her request. Listen to her brilliant reply. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Mark chapter 7 and verse 28. She said, I believe that just a crumb from your table will heal my daughter. And her answer brought a smile to Jesus' face. And he set her daughter free. And then he said to her, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. Her crumb of faith was larger than than the faith the size of a mustard seed that Jesus was searching for in Israel. Mark tells us she went home and found the child laying in bed and the demon gone. Mark chapter 7, verse 29 and 30. Perhaps you have a child who you might think is demonized. There, here are some signs that demons might be present. Extreme violent behavior, limbs that become stiff, throwing oneself into a fire or water, temporarily unable to speak, becoming stiff as a board, having seizures. If your child has one or more of these symptoms, I invite you to agree with me as I pray for your child. Thank you, Jesus that you are more powerful than any evil spirit. Release faith into the heart of this parent praying with me right now for their child. I break the power of evil spirits that are tormenting your child, and I command them to leave your child right now. Come, Holy Spirit, fill this parent with your presence. Replace the tormenting spirits with your peace right now. Mother, go check on your child and write to me and tell me what God has just done for you. Jesus showed us how much he loves Gentiles, and he wanted them to experience God's power and presence. Jesus had walked more than 50 kilometers over steep mountains to rescue this Gentile woman's daughter. He is a loving Savior to all. From Tyre, Jesus traveled north to Sidon, then over the Lebanon mountain range to the Bekar Valley to join the ancient road leading to the Gentile region called the Decapolis. Those ten Roman cities formed a trading alliance that brought prosperity to the local people. Despite their prosperity, their gods were unable to protect their children from evil spirits or purchase health for them when they became ill. Mark traces Jesus' journey through the region to the western side of the Sea of Galilee by saying, then Jesus returned to the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the region of the Decapolis, Mark chapter 7 and verse 31. After Jesus arrived in the region, Mark tells us they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. Mark chapter 7 and verse 32. Again, the news had gotten out that Jesus was visiting their region, and they brought a deaf man with a speech impediment to Jesus to be healed. And Jesus, taking him aside from the crowd, 
privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. Mark chapter 7 and verse 33. Notice that Jesus isolated the man in order to give him his full attention. So far, no one has been able to say why Jesus did what he did, but touching the man's ears and mouth, it was clear to him that Jesus knew exactly what his problem was. Mark says his ears were opened and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly, Mark chapter 7 and verse 35. My father had a speech impediment, but God freed his tongue. I started to stutter when I was about five years old. Dad took me a day, Dad took a day to pray for me and to fast for me. If you have a child who is stuttering, I touch your child's tongue and pray with me uh, for your child. I command your tongue to be loosed and your speech to become clear in the name of Jesus. Invite your children to say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Write to me and tell me what has just happened. Isaiah prophesied that the people will be able to know who God's Messiah is when the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, then shall the lame man walk like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. This clearly shows us that Jesus was God's promised Messiah, not just for Israel, but for all people. Uh, here are some stories of people's ears who have been healed. Our daughter was in Peru as a teenager up in the Amazon, and a man uh, came and, and he was being prayed for, and as soon as she prayed, his ears were opened, and she said to me, Daddy, that man lost his mind. He was so happy with joy that God had opened his ear. A lady in Virginia Beach had come uh, for some emotional pain that she was suffering, and as uh, Pastor Margaret prayed for her, uh, she was able to forgive, and immediately she heard a popping sound, and her ears were open. She had not even uh, told Pastor Margaret that she needed surgery on her ears. That surgery was canceled. A lady in Thailand was having trouble forgiving someone, Pastor Margaret and I were teaching on forgiveness. And as we prayed for that lady to be forgiven, again her ears popped. And she knew that her ears had been healed. She hadn't even told us that she was asking for prayer for her ears. So we encourage you to forgive from your heart. That's what Jesus said. If you forgive from your heart you will be forgiven. So my heavenly Father will do for every one of you who do not forgive your brother from your heart. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 35. If you're holding something against someone, just forgive them from your heart and God will open doors for you beyond your imagination. Mark says the people were astonished beyond measure, saying Jesus has done all things well he even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Mark chapter 7 and verse 37. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Now, someone listening to me has been looking for the truth. And Jesus has hidden himself nearby you, waiting for you to discover him. Turn around, take a new look. Search a little bit deeper, as the prophet Jeremiah said. You'll find him when you search for him with all your heart. And you have recognized, as I have spoken today, you have a demonized child. I just pray for your child right now. Demons, go right now. Any of those symptoms that you heard me talk about, seizures, stiffness, throwing yourself in fire, violent behavior, any of these things that are gripping your child, I command that uh, demon to leave your child right now and for the Holy Spirit of God to come and live within you and your family and each one of your children. 
If you're deaf, I command your ears to open. If you are mute, I command your tongue to speak. Right now, begin to praise God, and you will find that your tongue is being loosed at this very moment. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.